Hello, listeners. Welcome to Ross Purdy Destroys Comedy. I'm your host, Ross Purdy Destroys Comedy. And boy, let me tell you, this past week, you ever heard of a K-hole? It's when you've done so much ketamine that you end up going down a hole. A psychological hole, so to speak. And let me tell you, I went down a (laughs) K-zone. I dug myself a hole, did a whole bunch of ketamine, and just read issue after issue of K-Zone. Yeah. I've seen a lot of K-folk around. Uh, You go to them festivals and shit, and they're like four-day festivals, and then you see a dude like uh, just passed out and all the paramedics around him and shit. And then you're like, dude, what the fuck are you doing, man? It's like Thursday morning. It's when the festivals just started. That's not how festivals work, is it, Ross Birdie? It is not, and I'll introduce you in a second. I just got to talk about the last time we attempted to do a video. It was with John Dawes Plus No Fuss. And let me say, you can make the argument that it didn't turn out great. It was jittery. But, But you weren't in the same room as me and John Dawes Plus No Fuss. When he occupies a space, things feel like it's skipping a frame. It feels like it's stopping and stuttering. That's just the magic power of old Johnny boy. Would you say? Like you've gigged with old John. I've known old Johnny boy for some time now, Mr. Purdy. Yeah, he goes up on stage. It's like he freezes. He's like a freezer. But the audio continues. Oh, yeah. It's like jittery. It's stuttery. John Dore is a funny guy. He reminds me of Jim Carrey, except he's not Canadian, which is way better because Canadians are fucking retarded, generally speaking. But sorry, go on. Oh, boy, I do not want you saying that on this show. Canadians? Yeah, please do not say that. All right. I love Canadians. None of my listenership are Canadians. I know. And I need all the Canadians to listen to this as I can. That's where all the comedy clubs are. Montreal. Montreal, just for laughs. You think of all the great Canadian comedy shows. Corner Gas. Naked News. Those are the two things, the two Canadian comedies. And uh, Montreal. The comedy festival. Yeah, the place, the actual place. Montreal is so funny in, a, in and of itself. It's like it's, it's a comedy in itself. It's like it's a sitcom. And I will introduce you in a second. You are pounding back some whiskeys right now. <laughs> That's some good whiskey. Thank you, yeah. Harvey. Harvey gave it to me. Harvey's here as well. Harvey is here. Uh, Harvey's a six foot rabbit that follows me around. Nice. Well, what, what is he for you around for? Uh, cause I'm Jimmy Stewart. Uh, like in a movie. Yeah. And he's telling me like what my life would be like if, um, I was never born. I need you burnt your whole face off or something. Yeah. So you can still notice I do have this look. It is because I got a George Burns face tattoo and I need to cover it up. Why? Well, because I go up on stage and people think I'm George Burns. So they're expecting like quality comedy. And instead they don't get that. Why don't you get it removed? Well, I'm trying to get it removed right now, but I need to save up all my sh- shekels, my dollary dues. And I will introduce you in a second. You're not just a disembodied voice for the people. Okay. So what happened when you got burnt? I mean, you got, it looks like you got burnt, but you got a tattoo. Well, getting a tattoo is a bit like being burnt. Yeah. It's being burnt passionately for the sake of body art. You are burning yourself in order to say, look at me. Look at the shit I did to my body. Someone pay attention already. And I will introduce you in a second. No, I'll just wait here. I'll just wait here until you're ready, and then I'll then I'll just. Oh yeah, yeah. Start. The show, if anything, this this is like pre-show talk. 
we're getting the guests kind of comfortable with what the type of topics we're going to talk about. But not Canadians. Not Canadians. We will be doing a huge deep dive on Dave Chappelle, though. Old, what, old what, Davey what do, chaps. What, what, do you think of, what do you think of Chappelle? I think he likes to uh, hit his leg with the microphone a lot. And then I see other comedians do it as well, and I'm like, ah, they're doing that Dave Chappelle styles. You know where he goes <laughs> and hits his leg because he thinks he said something real funny. And it's normally at a time when the rest of the audience is like, that wasn't the really my leg slapping bit. I would have slapped my leg at a different bit or not at all. You know what I mean? Well, actually, Dave Chappelle, he's got restless leg syndrome. He's gotten real uh, muscly, hasn't he? Yeah. He used to be skinny, skinny, like a uh, skinny. Skinny boy, but it's all arms, no legs. So, um, And he sits down on the stool all the time to impart the truths. That's so the you, truth sit. When yeah, you're a comedian yeah. and you're sitting on a stool, yeah. that's the truth you're telling. But when you're standing up and you're walking around, that's you doing jokes. You don't want to sit on a stool because <laughs> better take a shit before you go on stage. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> yes, yes. I love a uh, uh, stool joke that we just did. Mm. Hey, so Dave Chappelle doesn't, li- doesn't like being called the I'm Rick James bitch guy. But his last special taught me that that shouldn't matter. Mm. So I think we should just go on and call him the I'm Rick James bitch guy. Just like I was saying before how that lady that was pissing on that dude on stage, she's in like a like high-class jazz band or something. She she likes to be called a great musician, but everyone just calls her the piss bitch. Now that's a good name for a, a musician. Piss bitch. Piss bitch. Yeah, man. That's like a punky rock kind of stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Because back in those days, you got to throw shit at the crowd. Because the the last punk guy did that, then you got to go more punk. Right. Yeah. Or you got to go full GG and just. Go G-G, pee pee. Yeah. GG and do a fucking GG shit on the old crowd. Yeah, just run around naked with your tiny little wing wang. Flip it out. Like a little ding dong. Do a little shit on it and then do a big wank with your poo turd. And then. And that's hilarious. That's punk rock. That's man. punk rock. It's, it doesn't have to be hilarious. It's punk. If it's funny, that's good. Obviously, it's a bonus because when you're doing punk rock, Funny isn't the main criteria. No, it's it's telling the system fuck off. It's about crushing the boundaries. Mate. It's about grabbing your little middle finger and saying, "I'm gonna finger your eyeball until you st- stop being yeah. oppressive, baby boy." Oh, now you're doing punk rock. Exactly. That's what I always thought. That was oh, a- oh god. Oh. I always considered you to be punk rock. But in more of like a working at Domino's, kind of wearing a balaclava type punk rock. Yeah, many people do those two things together, especially at the same time. Well, if you're working at fucking Domino's with a balaclava on, that's some that's hot in there. It's in the hot. Kitchen. It's very hot in that kitchen. And I will introduce. I will introduce you in a second. <sighs> That's some good whiskey. Did I uh, tell you about that whiskey? I thank you, Harvey. Harvey. Before about that whiskey. Thank he you. He said Har- it was good whiskey, and then I said, had some, true to his word. That's why I like Harvey. Hey, I wonder if his name's Harvey Harvey Birdman. No, it's not. <laughs> it's probably Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I got, t- I got something to add to that riff. Yeah. Hold on. Harvey Bird Wine. Mm hmm. What was the bit you were going to add? Harvey Bird Wine. Steen. No, no Steen. Just Harvey Bird Wine. Hmm. So, when are you going to reveal the George Banks tattoo you have on It's your George face? Burns. That's problem one. The greatest one. English goalkeeper in the history of the uh, comedian, Premier League. The comedian George Burns. He's a star in Oh God. He was God. I thought it was uh, Bruce Almighty. No, that Jim Carrey was God. That's the Canadian guy. We're not you know allowed Steve to talk Carell, about. You know Steve Carell when he made a big boat 
and put all the animals in it. That's who you're talking about. Yeah, that's what she said. That's it. <laughs> Get it? Like the thing? Noah's wife. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That was uh, before the flood. This is post-flood comedy. So, so Chappelle Corby, she's smuggling those drugs, right? No, nah, I don't reckon she did. Yeah, but Dave Chappelle Corby, he smuggled in J.K. Rowling books. Are they friends? They <laughs> probably are. You should have warned me about cultural shit before I got here because I don't really pay that much attention. Other than J.K. Rowling was like, that dude with a dick is a dude. And everyone's like, how dare you, bitch? You're not coming to my Harry Potter party. She's like, I am Harry Potter, you fucks. And then she didn't. And then she didn't go anyway because they wouldn't let her in. No, she doesn't believe the science. She believes the magic. That's the way to do it, man. And once... Wizards and, and warlocks and witches and all that stuff. Once they're able to figure out how to make someone transition from one gender to the other, using the power of magic, she's not going to believe it. Uh, I see what you're saying. She's a magic person, not a science guy. Yeah, definitely not. And this is Mark Oscar I'm talking to. Hello, Ross Purdy. It's uh, nice to see you again. <laughs> we thought we thought that was going to be a bit throughout the whole show. I was never going to say your name, but then I said your name 20 minutes in. Ha, ha, ha. Some names you can't say, though, you know what I mean? Right. Like, um, I don't know, Adolf Hitler or Pol Pot. Can't say those names anymore, you know, because of cancel culture. Mm. Can't say Pol Pot like that. Oh, Pol Pot. People get real upset, well, especially Cambodians. Yeah. Hitler cancelled himself, though, didn't he? Hitler's still alive, man. He went and joined the... The boys from Brazil? Uh, yeah, he, so he started making rockets. Oh. Down in Florida there. Now he's went off in... And who house. often goes to Florida? Uh, Mickey Mouse. Boys from Brazil. <laughs> exactly. Is oh, Mickey Mouse a boy from Brazil? Ah, I don't know, but his wife's called Minnie, and she's huge. She's so giant. That Disney says, and oh. I think it's weird how these new liberal crazies tell me about want it. Minnie Ross Ma- want Minnie Mouse to not wear a dress because apparently wearing a dress makes you fuckable and yeah. sexy. Isn't Minnie Mouse like young or something? It wouldn't put it because She's Disney's, 18. Disney's full of fucking pedos, mate. Yeah, well, you don't think Walt Disney was getting up them guts? What gut? Oh, the guts. The cartoon guts. He drawed the guts he got up to. I don't think Walt Disney was a whiskey man. I think he was a a, a shandy guy. He was not. Hmm. He was a hand shandy man. <laughs> Him and his Nazi boys making cartoons in the basement. Pulling each other's winkies, you know what I mean? And that's what inspired them. That's why they're always talking about rockets. Because they're like, oh, let's go to the moon with our rocket Mickey Mouse. We all know what they mean now. After it's all come out, it's all been exposed now, thanks to Joe Rogan and Neil Young. You know what I mean? As soon as they got on the fucking Spotify, it was like, show's over. No one's going to the moon. Am I right? The Earth's not around. Well, Neil Young is like, he's calling the pot. That whole misinformation thing, it's like the pot calling the kettle black. Because what's a bigger piece of misinformation than Neil Young's name? Yeah, no, he's actually really old. He's old. He's an old man. He's, he's, he's Neil, change his name to Neil Old. Did you know this, right? Yeah. Neil, it should be Neil Older, and then in 10 years, Neil Old. Yes. And then Neil Dead. And right. Then, and then Neil, who cares? Uh, you know Neil Young's wife is called Daryl? Braithwaite? No, Daryl, just Daryl. Summers? It, this is his wife's name, Ross Purdy. Daryl. He, he married someone called Daryl, uh, as is, in Dazza. Is Daryl like Cher only has one name? Daryl. Ah, it's probably Daryl fucking... Br- 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 Summers. Daryl Brown from fucking Cool and Gatta. His name's Dazza. Her name is Dazza, and he married her. And like, yeah, why would you marry a man? Why would you marry? Why would you marry a, a man called Dazza? A woman called Dazza. 
So, Mark, you're here to promote your upcoming Melbourne International Comedy Festival show. On your mark, get set, Oscar. Is That's this the right. type of things you're going to be talking about during your latest hour of stand-up? I'll be doing a gender reveal on Neil Young's wife. Oh. It'll be live. It'll be real. And it'll be uh, shocking to some, but not Neil. Or maybe Neil. Maybe Neil doesn't know. No, it'll be more shocking if Neil Young changed his goddamn name. I'm saying it here. I'm red hot. Uh, him and Joe Rogan were having beefs on the Spotify's because Joe Rogan was peddling the informations or the misinformations and Neil Young was like, I've had enough of this, mate. I'm taking my song and I'm off the Spotify. Well, I think Neil Young should go back on Spotify and support me, Ross Purdy. You can't go back now. He should support me, Ross Purdy. I've been fighting the fight against Joe Rogan since day one of this podcast. And now everyone, and now everyone's going up against him and acting like a hero. But who was there? Episode one, a going trying to go against Joe Rogan. Me, you were Ross Purdy. And our wife's podcast was going to be called the Joe Rogan Experience, but no, their lawyers just sent me cease and desist. I ain't going to do that. What if you change it slightly to the Joe Rogan's experiences? Try that, but it has to be. <clears throat> few degrees away from Joe Rogan experience. I tried Joe Rogan. I tried Joe Brogan. Yeah. I tried Joe Toboggan. Did None of try, it worked. Did you try Joe's gym? Now that's something I haven't tried. Because people will relate it. They'll be like, oh, Jim, uh, Joe, Joe Jim, Joe Rogan, because he's always talking about the gym and power foods. Yeah, and how he's like, he's doing somersaults on elk meat or something. That's right. And mm. uh, he eats umbilical cords and then uses them for like chains, uh, neck chains. Oh, excuse me a moment. Stuff. Mm. Let me just, let me just let me look at the camera here. Piece of hair got in my mouth. Disgusting. Because I'm passionate. And when you got hair in your mouth. That's what people say about you, Ross Purdy. Not just that you have that George Banks uh, tattoo. B- Burns. But George you're Burns. passionate. You've got your comedies like absurd, like next level shit. And then also that you're short and fat. Those are the things I hear the most. I don't think I'm I'm this is this is a six pack. Six what? This is a this is a six pack right here. Six of what? Uh, fat stomach. <laughs> six, six kilo, six kilogram basketball. That's funny. I'll be respected more if my stomach was in fact as basketball. An actual basketball. Then you'd be like a freak. So let's get that <laughs> fucking freak. Ross Purdy on with the basketball stomach. Let's get the freak boy out here and we just bounce his stomach around. Ha, huh, look at that fucking freak. And get a group of like, uh. Like the NBA crew to start bouncing you around, and like throw you through hoops and nets. So, is this what you talk about in your latest stand up hour on your mark, get set, Oshka? This is all we've covered all the bits already. Okay, I'm very ten. sorry. I was meant to try and sell your show. It's a 10 minute show, and it's all done. oh, it's 10, it's 10 minutes. What do you do for the rest of the 50 minutes? Nothing, it's all intro music and walk, walk <laughs> all right. Music. And then I go. I get some MC to go, ladies and gentlemen, for ages. Just introducing, 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 introducing. Then finally, at the like forty-five minute mark, I'll come out and be like, yeah, um, do a little what I just did before, and then walk off. Okay, that's interesting. Not- they always talk about how you should. Leave the audience uh, annoyed and feeling like they wasted their money and pretty much just making a mockery of their time. But no one ever actually goes out there and does it. And that's why, Mark, I think you're going to change the game with this show. And I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to go see it. Well, I'm thinking 
that's all I'm thinking when I'm thinking about comedy is breaking bounds, Ross Purdy. Breaking bounds like that. And all the bounds have been broken, so I think kind of what you were just thinking then. I think what can we do with this beast? Let's kill the beast. So I go out there and just take a shit or something, walk out, cunts are like, the fuck was that shit? You know? And then they like say, they're like, what the fuck was that shit? And they're talking, you know? Learn my name's out there. Then next year you come back and do some real stand-up. Problem is there won't be any audience. Mm. Not really, you know. It's a, it's not a sound plan, but that's my plan. And you're doing this at Trades Hall? Yeah, no, at the uh, Town Hall. Oh, that's the, that's the big boy. That's the big boy stage. Well, I want to wait. We don't put this podcast out or whatever this is uh, before the festival because I got on at the gala. So I don't, and I've got oh. on at the gala with my straight material. So what I'm going to do is go film a spot and then just go there and do what I just said. You know, really just fucking destroy it. Kind of just gaslighting the audience like this is the bit I'm going to use to sell my show, but then they go see the show and then it's just... Not even that at all. Not even that at all. You're freaking just... You're playing... You're not even playing the game, man. But guess what? That's why people love you. They're going to remember me afterwards. For sure. Uh, How much whiskey have you had? Um... In my life, it, that's hard to calculate. You know what I was that thinking? That particular the other day? whiskey. Uh, I don't know. I've drunk a lot of whiskey in my days. You know what I was thinking the other day? If you say, you know why people don't save all their cigarette butts that they've ever smoked and keep them in a pile? You know why? They're afraid of the ash. Because <laughs> then they wouldn't smoke anymore. But they like smoking. If they looked at that ash, they might be afraid of what they see. I wonder if you could smash all the ash you've ever got from all your ciggies into a little cube about yay big. This brings me up to this brand new segment I like to call Smash the Ash. And you could call it Pocket Ash. This is Smash the Ash. Tell me about this Smash the Ash, Ross Purdy. So, cigarettes. Yeah. Do you vape? I vape uh, from a hose. Are you a vapor? I vape from a hose, garden hose. Oh, like a bong. Kind of, but more like ash. I've been hitting the bongs recently too. Oh, is that what gave you all these great, wonderful ideas to just smash the industry? And the way they think that comedy should be and not what it is, it's alive and breathing animal. They don't know what animal. comedy is, Ross Purdy. It's alive and breathing animal. Purdy, come on. A few more whiskeys and I'll tell you what fucking comedy is. <laughs> okay, mate. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you to get A few more dumb. fucking ones of these, mate. I'll fucking tell you what fucking what it's all about. Like I said, you gotta get in there and then when you're in the comedy gala, you just fucking go, ah, you fucking retards. And then you throw a mask at them. You sounded a little like Dave Hughes just then. Yeah, people have said I sound like Dave Hughes sometimes, but that's because Dave Hughes saw me once at an open mic some years ago. Yeah, so Dave, Hughes, so Dave Hughes is not only copying you, your voice, he's copying your crackpot theories. Is he? Yeah. I've never heard any of his theories. Well, it's all on Twitter. Do you reckon I should check that out or is it just shit? It's not great. If I already know all these ideas, then I don't need to check out that nah, anyway. You just trust trust me. It's like he's What about your of- show, Ross Purdy? You doing some more mad shit at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival? Well, we'll get to that right after this sponsored message. Hi, this is Ross from Ross Purdy Destroys Comedy. We're here with my guest, Mark Oshka. And we're here to talk about Hungry Jacks. Yeah, Whopper with cheese is fucking better than all the other burgers. What's an Angus beef? No one knows. It honestly doesn't matter. Eat it, you cunt. I just don't have a regular Whopper. The Angus isn't necessary. Although I had a venison um, bolognese the other day, which really added some flavor to it. Uh, 
venison bolognese. Follow that up with a double whopper elk burger. It gave me all the protein I need to live. So I never have to have protein again. I don't want this much protein in my body. You got, you got too much protein, you reckon? That's why I'm so short and fat. It, the protein doesn't know where to go. Just so, where does it just go to your feet? It just goes to my feet. and My feet are very tall and skinny. But the rest of my body is very short and misshaped. You got like lady, the uh, old lady Chinese feet. Yes. Like so if you want feet. old lady Chinese feet, go to Hungry Jack's at the Melbourne CBD. Which one's that? Because there's a few there that are pretty good. Oh, uh, any of them. They're all good. You ever been to that one on um, Elizabeth Street there near the Flinders Street Station? Tell you what. Got a good whopper and cheese there once, eh? Yeah. You ever been to Shannon Elizabeth Street? What's that? Well, it's where the, the American woman pretends she's foreign and in high school. <laughs> and then she she takes her top off and she's being webcammed and she doesn't realize she's being webcammed. And, you you know, mean Club X? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been there a couple of times. Like revenge porn, but before revenge porn, and then Jason Biggs is there. I went there a couple of times back in the day, you know. Remember then? You know, they got that New York style peep show. I put a $2 in there, and all I saw was footage of 9 11. Nice. Uh, was it the like legit stuff where they were like, this isn't even possible? Two planes hitting buildings and they just fall down to the ground like that. Give me a fucking break. The reality is crumbling around us today, Ross Purdy. That shit ain't real. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell because of my boner. Hmm. Do you remember that comedian called Alan Driscoll? Alan Driscoll? Yeah, he still owes me 20 bucks. What for? The fuck? What's he owe you twenty bucks for? Booze? Yeah, the freaking booze money. What about what about what about him? He used to tell that joke about nine eleven. He's like how toddlers uh, laugh when like things fall down. It was like he was talking about level like when you start finding shit funny when you're two or something. And then and then it was like when you're a toddler and you see something fall down and you laugh and you go ha ha and he, and he goes that's why nine eleven was so funny. <laughs> Interesting. And is this part of your show? You're nah, doing Alan Driscoll's uh, material about 9-11? My show is done. I told you all my show. Oh, it's so done, mate. all of it, all the stuff we did at the beginning, plus 45 minutes of just intro. I told you I'm pushing boundaries, mate. I'm breaking the fucking mold. You're breaking the mold. And people love it when things are broken. Mold, bones, faces. Hearts. They love seeing it on the internet. They go in there so they can look at things getting broken and fucked up. Then they can be like, oh, I'm not nowhere near as broken as that. Then they can pretend they're all right. Meanwhile, they're living in Melbourne. The most livable city in the world, Ross Purdy. It was the most livable city. Hey, you know, I got revoted. Revoted back in. Why most livable city in the world. Vogue magazine. Vogue. Vogue. They're saying what's in Vogue now? Yeah, that's what Vogue does. Oh. They say what's in Vogue. And Melbourne is in Vogue. Jimmy Dean on the front cover of a magazine. Melbourne's in Vogue, mate. You got to get fucking used to it, mate. All right? Okay, all right. We got scooters. We got scooters on the streets. Used to be bikes. Remember that, bikes? Mm? Now it's scooters. I'm sorry, I was too busy voguing. Mm, doing good. I think that uh, balaclava thing is good. But I still think you should reveal your George Banks tattoo underneath to the world because I'd love to see that shit. They'll be like, yeah, that's fucking funny, mate. The goalkeeper from the 80s. Okay, you're getting it An wrong. An English premier. You'll never see goalkeeper me. From you'll never the see 80s. me getting something it's deliberately. It's obscure, wrong. I know. <laughs> but if you were in Britain, they'd be like, yeah. Over here, they'd probably be like, who's that? Hey. And I'd be like, it's Ross Purdy. And they'd be like, yeah, but who's he got on his face? Not George Banks. You know, from Mary Poppins, George Banks, the dad. Not George Banks, George Burns. Oh, right. George Burns. 
Burns. Who the fuck's George Burns? He's. I keep t- telling you this. He's the comedian from uh, Oh God. He played God. The old oh, guy. He got the cigar. Oh, yeah. Bring up a picture of that guy so I can see him. Bring up a picture of him, Harvey. Well, you just need to take your thing off and we'll all know who George Burns is once and for all. You know, I actually glued this thing on. <laughs> what kind of glue? Squacky glue. I hear that's really adhesive. It really is, because I never wanted to reveal the tattoo in the first place. So probably because you didn't get it. You're right. I went, ah. I went all this effort to not reveal <laughs> something. It wasn't a George Burns tattoo after all. It was a George Banks tattoo. You're Famous right. British goalkeeper from the 80s. You're right. I wanted to be unique. Well, a eunuch isn't the same as unique. And now I know that. You Speaking can't, like, like, you're like, I wanted to be unique, so you cut your balls <laughs> and your dick up. Hey, everybody, I'm unique. And this now, brings like, me to a brand new segment. <laughs> Valentine's Day is coming up, and we all need to know what's going on in the love life of Melbourne, and who better to teach us this? Then Mark Oshka, and this is Mark's Love Tips. Uh, well, I was watching a video the other day of Waleed Ali. You know Waleed from uh, Project? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I feel more romantic already. And he is a Muslim man. Yes. But he doesn't have a beard, which is ridiculous. He's got a little bit of facial hair, but not a full-on beard. And his wife is not a Muslim woman. She's like a convert. She wasn't like born into Islam. So she talks a lot over him. Don't ever let that happen. That's right. my love tip. Love tip number one. Don't convert to your partner's religion. That's not what I said. I yeah, said if your wife what I, talks too it's much. It's what I heard. Don't let her. That's all. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Unless you make sense then. Right. The best keep it in the house. Tip number one, grow a little bit of facial hair, but not a full-on beard. Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, I don't know. I wouldn't go with the, the gay stubble because a lot of people will see that and be like, eh. and I don't like the pencil-thin moustache. It seems like you have to spend too much work on it. No, you don't want to be spending time, more than 30 seconds in front of the mirror. Just a quick rinse. Check you're not out of, like, you haven't got a scar. Tip number two. From the night before. Facial hair. What's your third tip? Uh, I don't uh, I don't like shaving because that's what I'm not a baby. Hmm. I don't like having a baby face. Tip three, don't have a baby face. No baby faces. What's your next tip for all the lovers out there in, in Melbourne land? We want to just get some loving on Valentine's Day. Oh, uh, well, uh, just uh, go up to anyone and be like, hey, you want to get married and have babies? Then if they say no, then you know. At least you tried. Yeah. And that's really what's important at the end. When I think Valentine's Day, I think about trying. How long, how many Valentine's Days have you been trying for now? Uh, uh, 27. So you're that old. Not much. Because I'm just a tiger. I can't be tamed. Ah, oh, yeah, I see. I can't be, I can't be tame, and I have no grace. <laughs> Topical. I just noticed something hmm? that this room is set up with those two little cactus things, like the Joe Rogan Experience. Well, like I said, he is my enemy, and I've been going against him since day one. And I've always recorded in this room. I've always recorded in this room, and you can't prove otherwise. With the two neon cactuses. If I was Joe Rogan, I'd I'd shoot arrows as well in Archer. You know what I mean? 
Tip number six, be an archer like a Cupid. That's Valentine's Day. Be Sterling Archer, the animated super spy agent. So what else do you want to talk about, Ross Purdy? Oh, God. I mean, I have a show on at the comedy festival. Oh, yeah. What's it called, Ross Purdy? It's called Ross Purdy in Hey, Hey, It's Doomsday. Is that what it's called? It's got what it's called. Fuck yeah. So, um, it's got, it's got some comedy. How many in it. shows are you doing? I'm doing 12. 12 big ones, huh? 12. And I'm doing Ross Purdy Destroys Comedy Live. Are you doing a Cheap Tuesday? Can I come down for Cheap Tuesday? Hmm. Doomsday? Hmm. It's on at 11.15. In the morning. And at, at the night times. <laughs> Fucking hell. That's early. Oh, are you are going to come down to the warehouse and do some shit during the festival? Uh, yes. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Mark runs a warehouse. It's like an underground warehouse. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's above ground. But it's an underground uh, sort of club. Spiritually, it's underground, but physically, it's above ground. What about late night party boys? I am also doing late night party boys on the weekends. Yeah. Friday and Saturdays. That's always a good show. You get a whole heap of crazy people in. They make people laugh. It's good times. And then we also get Mark on. He's one of the crazy people. Well, I'm the sane one. I'm there to make <laughs> sure that you're all uh, not mad. Well, you play your famous character, Homeless Joe. Which is just me doing stand-up. And then you're like, this is Homeless Joe. And then I can't have to play into this. Thing you made up for some reason you call me homeless joe <laughs> and that can we speak to homeless joe right now just so the audience gets a little bit of a, a peek at what's his character like what type of comedy does he do who is homeless joe <laughs> well homeless joe is a character really that i just made up yes that you made up so oh. I was doing my regular thing, telling jokes and shit, and you and Damien Voss were like, let's get him in, let's call him Homeless Joe, and let's give him some fucking stage time. So I came in and did my regular thing, which you could catch at uh, my own uh, venue that I run out in um, an undisclosed location, and uh, that's where I hang out, and that's where I do my gigs. Uh, but Homeless Joe is uh, not a real person. Ah, that makes sense. And is Homeless Joe inspired by someone you met in your life? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, um, basically it's just me. From times I like didn't have a house, so I was like sleeping rough. Now that is interesting because, in a way, isn't all our characters just a little piece of us? I think that's what it's all about, Ross Purdy. Like, if I was to do a character, I'm not doing a character right now, but if I was to do a character, I would just take a little piece of myself and blow it up to cut tunishly exaggerated proportions. Yeah, that's and what that's what homeless Jim is. Yeah, homeless Jim. Mm. It's a, he's a boring character because he doesn't do fuck all. Well, he is homeless. And we do need to respect that. No, I don't really. What's by not about? doing anything to help him or his circumstances, but maybe occasionally walk past him on the street and try to avoid eye contact. Maybe flick him a coin or two. Maybe, maybe flick him a coin occasionally. How about that? He can't really do much with... How about flipping a coin or two, Ross? Perry? Yeah, maybe like a couple of, like a tour. A couple of tours, mate. Couple or even of, waft him a note. A couple of tours in Vietnam, and that will help them with their mental health, will it not? A couple of 50s, mate. A yeah, couple a couple of 50s ain't 50 gonna Vietnam hurt. tours. A couple of fucking 50s, mate, ain't going to fucking hurt homeless Jim, all right? And it certainly ain't going to bust your fucking pocket, you know what I mean? Just fucking help her. Help help a man out, you know. Help fucking homeless Joe out. I mean, he does he does go he does a good thing there sitting on the street there. It's not easy for him either. Like fucking, he's got to fucking deal with shit. 
It's like a lot of people say, like, homeless Jim's just a fucking cunt. And I was like, the only reason he's on the street is because he's a fucking cunt. He's not just a fucking cunt, mate. Sometimes shit happens to good fucking people and good fucking people go through shit and they end up in these fucking circumstances and all I'm asking for is a bit of a fucking handout, you know, a bit of a fucking, so that I can feel a little, more, a little bit more fucking comfortable in the night time, you know. I'm happy to pick up ciggy butts and use that. I'm not fucking asking for smokes. I'm not asking for too fucking much, am I? Well, i got to fucking just feel a little bit fucking warm for the night like anyone wants, you know. I mean, what would you fucking know anyway, Ross Purdy, in your mansion out there in Lilydale with your balaclava and your Georgie Banks tattoos? It costs a lot of fucking money to get a George Banks tattoo all over your face. That's, what's the fucking tattoo worth? Six, seven hundred fucking bucks? Yeah, how about you fucking get a less fucking beautiful version of George Banks? You know, go to one of those less expensive guys and you can throw me a few fucking bones. But no, no, no. It's always fucking about you. It's always about Ross fucking Purdy and his fucking comedy show and his, oh, I'm playing at fucking Storyville. Like, oh, hey, that must be fucking nice. Playing at a fucking Storyville club, eh? Nice yeah, it's, one. It's, it's pretty good. I'm happy for you, mate. <laughs> I'm happy for you. I'm also playing at Bards at a Pick a Fairy, and I'm also doing live Destroys Comedy at Lantern Lounge. Cool. I'm just doing the the warehouse. I'm trying to arrange more shows there throughout the comedy festival, and then we can just get whoever's doing gigs to come on, come over. It's going to be sweet. So it was so great for me just then, just to get a little glimpse of what of homeless Jim Joe. Yeah, he's a real piece of work, man. Not only is a victim, but he's also a piece of shit. And that reminds me of the song Born in the USA. Oh, Springstein. Springstein, because Bruce Springstein, he wrote a song about uh, Vietnam tours. And the... But he the wasn't con- there for the The war, consequences for that. Well, he's, uh, he's right in front of the perspective of a man who went to Vietnam and came back to nothing. And that's a bit like Homeless Jim Joe. And I think right now we should end this podcast by maybe singing a song about the hardships of war and homelessness that can also be misinterpreted as sort of a nationalistic uh, anthem. Bruce Springsteen has never been to war. That's a good start. Bruce Springsteen has never been to war. All I ever done was write a song, a shitty one at that. He does a song about going to war. But I ain't ever been to war. I'm gonna have something catchy like saying, Hey, USA, pretty great. And that's the only part you're gonna remember. Well, that reminded me of a joke I wrote. Uh, but that sounded like Bob Dylan. Uh, no, that was Bruce Springsteen. That was not that wasn't Bob Dylan. This that is Bob. was sounding like another Hebrew man, and it wasn't fucking... Robert Zimmerman? Zimmerman. Yeah, exactly. Is that the guy that got done Robert, in for trying to stand his ground? Robert Timmerman. <laughs> he sounds like uh, Adam's family stuff. <laughs> you know, that spooky voice? When you really slow Robert Timmerman's down, <laughs> it sounds just like that Adam's family kind of... And I'm going to eat your face off. Like the movie Face Off. Brilliant. And what another insightful look at the character of Homeless Jim Joe. Okay. Um, You got anything uh, to say? Bruce Springsteen is not... You were doing a uh, Bob Dylan voice, but you said the word grey and it reminded me of a cool joke I wrote. You want to hear the cool joke? (laughs) Okay, and thus on a big laugh. You know how, like, uh, I don't believe that there's such a thing as black people or white people. Okay. You know how I can prove this? Because when a black person and a white person have a baby, their baby should be gray. You ever seen any gray people walking around, Ross Purdy? It's been Mark Oshka. Thank you for listening to Ross Purdy Destroys Comedy. Thanks for having me, Ross Purdy Destroys Comedy.
and Harvey for the whiskey. Thank you, Harvey, for the whiskey. And the yeah. jo- and the Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> Fuck off, Joe. Fuck off, Joe Rogan's. Oh, Neil Young and Daryl. Neil Young and Daryl. We're just thanking people that we've talked about throughout the show now. May we, may you be forever together. I mean, you can end any time, Harvey. Man we're probably, we're probably just going to keep going. <laughs> you don't say cut. I'm going to go. Man and man. All right. Should we say cut? I said cut just then. You did. I'll cut it.